How does a fix and flip loan work? Paul McGuire here, and I've done over 100 fix and flip loans, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how they work. I've done several in the last few months. So let's go through all the details so you understand how they work and what you need to do to be successful with a fix and flip loan. So I'm gonna use a company that I use, they're called Corvest and they're out in the West Coast and they lend nationwide. I'm just gonna give you a basic example of a fix and flip loan and how that loan works. So typically there is a sales purchase contract which is provided to the lender, they review it. They do an internal review to get an idea of what the value is of that property. And then they're going to send an appraiser to look at the property and they're gonna look at two things. One is what are you paying for the property and what's the value of the property as is. And then they're gonna look at what's the value of the property fixed up. They call it the ARV, after repaired value, okay? That's an industry term. So you have the as is value and the after repaired value. That appraisal is gonna cost you between five to a thousand bucks. Typically now I'm paying about 800. The lender's gonna go out, they're gonna look at the property, they're gonna walk through it, they're gonna take some pictures, the appraiser for the lender, and then they're gonna send the appraisal back to the lender. In the meantime, the lender is gonna ask you for some things. So they're gonna have you fill out a loan application, it's called a 1003. It's basically four pages and it gives some basic data about you, your social security number, date of birth, some history of your financial background, your assets, your liabilities, and a little bit about what property you're buying and what kind of loan you're looking for. Now they have different products, but the most common product for fix and flip is called a bridge loan. And a bridge loan is just like it sounds, it's going from here to here over the bridge, okay? So that's why they call it a bridge loan. We're gonna start here at as is value, we're gonna do some work on the property, and then we're gonna end up with a different value when we're all done, and we're gonna sell it or refinance it. Typically these loans for fix and flips, like with Corvettes, are typically 12 months, and the points are anywhere from a point and a half on the low side to up to three points on the high side, typically they're about two points. Now, before you get all excited about that, remember these lenders need to make money, okay? They have costs, they have overhead, and so two points is for a private money loan, I've seen them as high as 10. So two, three, four is typical, with Corvus is typically two, two and a half, depending on the deal and the size of the loan. After that, they're gonna ask you to provide some bank statements to show your cash flow. They're gonna ask to see that you have liquidity in the bank so that you have reserves and where is your down payment to buy the property. So a recent property that I bought, let's say it was $300,000 and I'm gonna buy it for 300,000. Typically they may lend me up to 85% of the purchase price. So 85% of 300,000 is roughly 255,000, right? So I'm gonna need 45,000 down or they may lend 90%, but they may charge me a little more interest. So at 90% on a $300,000 home, I'm gonna need 10% down or 30,000, and they're gonna give me 270. But here's the beauty of the fix and flip loans. They'll also lend you a high percentage of what it takes to fix the property, sometimes up to 100%. So they will ask you for a budget to fix it. Now, you newbies, may get a little hung up on the budget, like, well, how do I do a budget? Do I gotta get all these estimates, et cetera? You do, but you can kind of ballpark it. And I've been doing it so long, I just ballpark it. So on a, say, a, you know, a 1,500 to 2,000 square foot house, for, and I use my own guys to fix stuff, but here's a ballpark. Say your kitchen is gonna be, you know, cabinets are gonna be five to 8,000. Your countertop's gonna be, three to 5,000. So you're gonna be 10 to $15,000 in your kitchen. And then you're gonna have some flooring throughout the house, maybe carpet, maybe tile, maybe laminate, call that five, six, seven grand, whatever it is. You're gonna have interior paint, three, four, five, six, seven grand, depending on the house and whether you're scraping off the old ceiling and putting new texture on and painting, what you're gonna do there is there sheetrock damage, do you need to tape and texture to repair that or tear it out because it's, got damage to it. So these are some of the costs. Exterior paint, maybe your exterior paint's five grand, six grand, whatever that is. Garage door's bad, maybe a garage door costs you a couple thousand bucks. Front door, maybe $250. I like to replace the front doors. So these are the things on your list. Landscaping, you know, what are we gonna spend on landscaping? Hauling off the trash and debris, maybe a thousand bucks for hauling off trash and debris, maybe 
1500 for landscaping, okay? Not a lot for landscaping. I often use black bark and white rock or we'll put some new sod in if the sprinklers work, okay? But don't go crazy on your landscaping for your basic cookie cutter fix and flip house. Just make it look clean and nice. A uh, driveway cracks, maybe I'm gonna put a couple grand just to repair those or if I gotta rip out the driveway, maybe I'll put six, seven, eight grand for that. Uh, depending on what it costs and then roof you can get roof bids sometimes when you buy the property they already have roof bids typically when you buy a fix and flip home if you don't have a roof bid some of these roofing companies you can just give them the address and then they'll google shot of it and they'll measure the roof from a picture in their office and they'll give you a pretty close estimate of what the property is going to cost to fix okay so that whole budget you will give to the lender i usually put in rough electrical a thousand rough plumbing a thousand just in case I got to change DFIs or some breakers. Uh, there's a little bit of plumbing work, etc. Okay. After you give them the budget, they will then look at the budget and say, well, is this reasonable, right? So say it's $50,000 to remodel the house. They may lend you 45,000 of that or 40,000 of that, but they'll give you the money as you fix up the house. So the nice thing about that is say you get a 90% loan on a $300,000 house. You need $30,000 down plus some closing costs. And then you have 80, 90, sometimes 100% of the money you need to fix it up. As you do the work, say you paint the outside of the house and you put in a new garage door and you have 5,000 for outside house paint and 2,000 for garage door, $7,000, okay? You then ask for a draw. They charge you a couple hundred bucks. They send somebody over. They take pictures. They go, yes, this is done. Here's your 7,000 or here's... 80%, 5,600, or here's 90%, 6,300, and you get your money back so you can pay your vendors, okay? Or the people that are doing your work. New windows, right? You can get bids for those. We buy our windows typically from third-party person, and you can either get them from Home Depot if they'll fit, or you can order them. Don't go crazy on windows. Just get basic windows that are consistent with what's required for you, that community. For example, in you know high wind areas, you may need a different type of window, different weathers, different windows, different thickness, different glass. So be familiar with that if you're gonna change out windows or get a vendor to do it, just don't go crazy. So all these things go to the lender. They have the budget, they have your loan application, they have some financials on you, they're gonna pull your credit report, but they're mostly interested in the property so if your credit is marginal, it doesn't mean they're not gonna lend you, it just means they may charge you a little more because you have not had the best repayment schedule or you've got some issues on your credit, okay? The most common, as a landlord of a lot of units, most common thing I see on credit reports is medical bills, okay? People just can't, they get charged these astronomical rates and they, they don't have the money, all right? So they're gonna take that into account, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna give you the loan. They may charge you a little more. Let's talk about loan fees, okay? They're gonna quote you a loan fee, all right? I, I gave you a range of typically what I experience but everybody's different and different lenders charge different things. Where Corvest, who I use, may charge one thing on, on some deals. Arch West may charge something else. A different bank like Chase may charge something else. But typically Chase isn't gonna do a fix and flip loan, right? They don't really do a lot of those. So your private money people, like the ones I mentioned, or there's others. You could go to Google and put private money loans or hard money loans, and you'll get a plurphery of lists. I would suggest if you're starting out, get a couple quotes from different people to find out what things cost, okay? Once you develop a reputation, once you've done a few deals, you've, you've made the payments and you paid them back, typically you'll find it a little easier to get money. The first few are always the most difficult because the lenders want to know that you can take this from what it's worth now to what it could be worth fixing it up and that you know what you're doing, okay? They don't want the property back, all right? Before I go on to the next thing, please subscribe and uh, comment below as well if you have some interest or some questions. So finally on these fix and flip loans, they're typically about 12 months and I would suggest that you get a built-in extension in case something happens, get an extra six months or three months if you can. They may charge you an extra percent or they may charge you an extra half a point or you know, it's up to them on what they do, but you wanna have a built-in extension. Why is that? Because things happen. Look at COVID, right? Look at the market, look at the interest rate changes. So 12 months should be enough. You should be in and out of your project and if you work diligently and you move quickly, 
should be in and out hopefully six and nine months, but that doesn't always happen. I recently had a, a property where a guy ran into the building, okay? That tied up the, the loan and had to get an extension. I've had the other ones where it took longer because you couldn't get materials or I couldn't have people get up to a remote area to finish the job, okay? So always try to get an extension. And finally on the fix and flip loans, uh, remember this is a relationship. These people are the golden ticket to you having money to be able to buy real estate, build wealth, create cash flow, but also know that you can lose money in real estate. So you gotta be careful. Make sure you're sure about what the after repaired value are, not somebody's opinion. Get some actual comparable sales and see what things have sold for. Now the appraiser will help you with that. And they do protect you because you're going to see on the appraisal and get a copy of it of what things sell for. Lastly, make sure you get a termite report on these properties and get some inspections to make sure you know what you're buying, especially if you're new. Make sure for sure that when you do get your loan, that you make sure you have reserves for payments so that you can make the payments during the fix up period. If you're new, one of the things you can do is you can put in four or five months reserves interest meaning they'll take out of the loan some reserves so that you have enough money. I'm Paul McGuire, create and help with families just like yours to create wealth, build real estate portfolios, and learn about real estate. It's a great investment real estate, and it's a great vehicle for you potentially long-term, certainly can be, to build wealth. But like any investment, you can lose money, you can make money. So that's why it's good to use realtors it's good to use investment advisors. Good to certainly use your accountant, your tax people, and of course, you know, your lenders and, you know, appraisers and all these people, escrow companies. All these people are a team that will work to help you to accomplish your goal. So before we go on to the next video, please subscribe and uh, let's stay in communication.